Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Madisonville Marine. When it comes to a selection of boats, sheer number of boats to view and inspect in person, no one matches Madisonville Marine showroom and lot. And they've got boats all over both uh, in terms of makes and models of boats. It's an enormous selection, and uh, there really is no better place to buy a boat. It's as simple as that. Go down there, see for yourself. Highway 411 North in Madisonville. You can also go to madmarine.com, but I would recommend going down there in person and just seeing it uh, and letting your eyes bulge out when you look at all those boats in one place. All right, I uh, want to uh, start talking about Tennessee's offense and defense for 2020, and we're going to zoom in on that. Don't worry about it. On the left, we got the offense. On the right, we got the defense. And what you see, you got the it's by position: quarterback, running back, wide receiver, etc. You can see them kind of color coded: lights and then darks. You've got by class: senior, junior, sophomore. As of next year, where these folks are going to be, and then a far right column is how many commitments they have in that position at the moment. All right, I am back with Ryan with Jimmy, with Josh, with Bob. And uh, what we want to do is talk about just what stands out to you. And there are a couple of guys normally and naturally that I left out, seniors that I had pushed off the board and then remembered after printing it, oh, wait, they're redshirting. So wide receiver Brandon Johnson is back up there. Running back Carlin Fields and me is back up there. Trey Smith is still on that list, though I don't think he's going to be back next year. Jarrett Garantano is still on that list. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. And there we are. We got it up there. And once we get to the offensive line, there's some names off there as well. But you'll notice there is no Gerard Means on the receiver list as well because he announced this week he is leaving. Thoughts on that top part? Just uh, anything stand out to you guys, quarterbacks, running backs? One thing to me that looks clear, you go back to Pruitt's first year, his first signing class, that junior class next year is going to be pretty thin, and you'll see that right. throughout. You know, uh, I don't know if it's going to jump out a lot of people, but the first thing I see when I see Ty Chandler's name is another guy that may be gone, so that's going to kill your running back depth a little bit more. Does that make Phil me more important that he did get ready? Explain why you year? say Chandler may be gone. Yeah. Because I think no, he'll nobody, go into the You think he could go? I think he will portal. go. I think he will go because – now, maybe he goes pro. Maybe he feels like he's good enough to go pro, but I just think as you saw the season go on, it seemed like Ty Chandler's role got smaller and smaller – Depending, it seemed like Tim yeah. Jordan, Gray, Chandler, at the beginning they were all equal, and towards the end it seemed like it was more Jordan and Gray. So I wouldn't be shocked if that running back chart loses another one. Thoughts, anybody, anybody agree, disagree? I, I think if there's going to be a surprise d departure, and there usually is, it may be Ty Chandler. He may be one of those guys that says, I can go to the NFL now, let's, do, let's see how I do at the combine, uh, or at my own pro day. Um, Thoughts on that positions we're looking at, though? I mean, wide receiver's gone from a strength to a... It, be, it becomes a question. Yeah. Uh, who, who makes plays for you? Is D'Angelo Gibbs ready to do that for you? The transfer from Georgia. Yeah, that's a, that's a question as he's been practicing there. He could be a defense back, but receiver looks like his future with Tennessee. Uh, Brandon Johnson, can he play a bigger role like he did a few years ago? But you just lose the obvious go-to guys with Juwan, Marquez, and also Domwood Anderson, who's a good option. Okay. That, that's the thing about the receivers. You had two guys you could argue were number one guys. Yes. Jennings and Callaway, mm -hmm. and the others are like second or third type guys in your rotation or your terms of importance. So I, I think the receiving core is going to be really interesting. I, I, I don't know that I don't think there's any way in the world the receiving will be as good this year as it was last year, even with Palmer coming back, Johnson, D'Angelo Gibbs. I think they take a step back. The All skill right. positions in general are interesting, and I've, and one thing to add on the receiver board that's okay. you're referencing those position ratings on our site. There's only one receiver listed in Tennessee's class, but there are two athletes who are likely receivers. So they do have three commitments at receiver coming in as of right now. But you still need a lot of help with that position, obviously. Yeah, I, I listed it as one because there's <laughs> only one that's officially a right. receiver. The two athletes I didn't plug yep. in there yet. All right, Chris, our director, let's go down. Keep keep scanning down, please. Uh, offensive guard. There's let's get another to where number we see, that jumps out. Let's get to where we see the center, please. I'm trying to get him. There we go. Oh, stop, Bob. What were you going to say, Bob? I was just going to say, at offensive tackle, you don't have a commitment yet. Now I think, and, and, and the recruiting guys can tell me, I think the kid from Texas is probably going to be a tackle when he he's gets got a, here. He's got a chance to be. The one they beat Liberty yeah. out for. <laughs> um, <laughs> you look at that and you, and you don't see any offensive tackles at this point. And, and I think that's worrisome. I mean, four offensive linemen overall, okay, that's fairly mediocre number-wise, but no tackles. Well, and you've, and you've lost two more linemen. I didn't mention yes. this earlier, but 
Ryan Johnson left, Marcus Tatum left, and a lot of people look at that and go, eh, they weren't starting anyway. Tatum yeah. had some starts this year. Johnson has filled in at every position. He's your spin well, guy. You he play see, anywhere. You want to say uh, another one that's leaving? Yeah, I Trey mean, Smith. Trey mean, Smith. Yeah. So when you look at that number, Ryan, Pruitt has a target, I guess, in mind of how many scholarship linemen he would like to have. They just can't seem to fully restock that position. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, th this is the challenge these days. He's mentioned before he would like to have ideally 15 or 16 scholarship offensive linemen on the roster, and that's what you shoot for because you know you're always going to have a few that are going to need to redshirt. You always can have a departure or two, and, and yeah, unexpected things happen like Trey Smith, like Jack Jones, all these guys over the years they've lost because of injuries. That takes a toll over time too, and it seems to happen more at offensive line than elsewhere. So uh, you've got to give yourself plenty of choices there, plenty of bodies, and that's, you know, again, it's been a challenge, and now it is again with th these guys transferring. Any, other, any spots, really quickly, any spots where you say, boy, they better hit on something this recruiting class. I, I look at that running back position. Chandler, Fields and me, Jordan, one or the other, they're all gone next year. You got Gray, you got a commitment this year. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. To, yeah, they need to find another running back. Yeah. 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 And T. Hodges, uh, I think it could be a nice player for him, but I think there is a, uh, there's a lack of not only depth, but I – I think you need somebody that's a, bit, a game breaker, and and that's going to be a key for Tennessee, I think, in recruiting for a running back. And typically, yeah. those aren't guys you find in the transfer portal, either. Yeah, so if, if you're sitting yeah. there saying, "Well, we can build depth, uh, we can go grab a kid from Michigan State or some kid that wasn't happy at Texas State, uh, Texas El Paso," yeah, you're not going to get a game breaker in doing yeah. that. You're just and, getting a body. And worth noting, they're recruiting a, a junior college running back or two, so they, I think they see a need at that position, too. I think that's the bigger need in some ways than receiver, but you need to hit both of those in this class pretty well. Yeah, right. that's why Eric Gray needs to make that jump to become a regular playmaker for them next year. Yeah, and he, he looked great against Vanderbilt, but yeah. we also have to take into account Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt was one of the worst run defenses in the league. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, interesting. When we come back, let's do the same thing with defense. Come on back. Always what you want to hear, but exactly what you need to hear. This is the Sports Source.